From the Edge of the Web Studios, here's what we're looking at this week. All right, so welcome back to uh, the Citrix Digital Marketing News Desk of Edge of the Web. Uh, this is the bonus news podcast and video for Edge of the Web episode 354. And I'm your host, Aaron Sparks. Joining me this week on uh, his take on the digital marketing news is Morty Oberstein. So let's take a look at our first article. In fact, he's mentioned in this article. Uh, over at uh, Search Engine Land, uh, Barry Swartz actually rolled out an article here regarding the, co the uh, core update that we're talking about today. Google's May. May uh, 2020 core update was a big and broad search data tools show. So on May 4th, Google began rolling out the May 2020 uh, core update. We know it could actually take a couple weeks to actually fully roll out, but based on everything uh, we've seen so far, it's a very large update. So um, Morty, uh, uh, Barry actually uh, uh, tied you in there in the first, uh, first reference. He mentioned a number of different tools that gives us the ability to be able to see vol volatility in, in the SERPs and <clears throat> He uh, reached out to you, and you called it an absolute monster. Um, what gives it such a uh, large, large uh, uh, perspective there? So what's funny is that it started off. I thought, okay, great, this is going to be a nice small update. It was sort of very, very small. I thought maybe Google was like trying to take it easy on us. People are short staffed. Um, SEOs are freaking out. Right. And then the second day rolled in, and the volatility levels. Okay, so there's general volatility levels. There's we have our rank risk index, you know, Moz has Mozcast, and those overall volatility levels are top level data, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, that spike on the second day was like matching the spike we saw during something like the Medic update or, or beyond the January 2020 core update. Mm -hmm. And then when you go into the actual sites and you go into the, the actual visibility losses um, and, the, and, the, and the niche data, so I actually tracked the first day. Like I ran each day, like what were the volatility increases per niche per day? So the first day was like, all right, this is a relatively small four core update. Mm -hmm. And then the second day I ran them I'm like, whoa, these are enormous. This is absolutely gargantuan, like what I call it, monstrous, something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, we're talking we're talking ten and twenty percent fluctuations. Sometimes even 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 more. Uh, yeah, and you tell you the top result. The top results are are fluctuating ten percent. Wow, wow, that's that's right? huge. So your average. Yeah, your your unconfirmed update, your average update, maybe one, two, three percent, something like that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So uh, we're see, we're certainly going to unpack it in the show to here, here today. But uh, but uh, you you were leading the pack there in this article, uh, kind of setting the entire uh, the the entire picture there. Uh, Barry also went through and uh, referenced a number of other uh, tool sets like SEM Rush, uh, as as well as Search Metrics, and they were pinpointing number of different categories as well. Now, what I'm coming right. across is these categories aren't gelling completely with all the different uh, takes uh, that we have on there. Uh, at the top of this uh, of this particular list that they were referencing from SEM Rush was travel, real estate, health, pets and animals and and people and society running at the uh, at the top list. SEM Rush just has released another article <laughs> regarding the Google 2020 update and at the top of their winners and losers literally was news. So things right. are okay. moving so quickly and, and we really it's tough to jump in early and and even get a, a gauge of this, right? So yeah, and it's all and it's all relative. Um, for example, I think the news thing was probably this. They just threw that in there, forgot, forgot to take it out. News is always the most volatile. Right. It's always changing. Like tracking your news. If you want to track rank for news, that is such a pain in the rear end because every day it's like a, a brand new. You have to track brand new keywords. Everything's constantly changing. So I think that was just left in there by accident. Oh, gotcha. I, I, it looked odd. It looked odd being at the top yeah. of that list there. Um, I would imagine that's what it is. Probably so. Uh, and again, uh, you know, Moz has its own perspective on the things. So yeah. But so Barry went through and he does a regular review of all these different tools. And uh, we're not out of the woods, guys. Uh, you've got to look at this, and this is going to be a long burn here. Um, but but at the same time, uh, you know, we're, again, we're going to unpack this on the show today. But uh, there's there's. Uh, there's a white knuckle approach to uh, <laughs> to core updates nowadays, yeah. and, this, and this one was a doozy. So uh, with that, we certainly appreciate Barry uh, contributing regularly into that into that space. So look for that Barry article over at this. What's it? <laughs> so he, this is what Barry lives for. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, he's good at it too. So you know, not trying to brand those Barry, but hey, he, he's doing pretty good. All right. So earlier today, we actually had a, uh, a meeting with uh, uh, Lily. Lily came out with a uh, an article here on the in the same vein, so uh, check it yeah. out. 
All right, for our second article, it comes from Path Interactive. Uh, from Lily Ray, she actually rolled out a, a blog article on the 8th, 550 winners and losers of Google May 2020 core algorithm update. So uh, we wanted to reach out to Lily and get her on uh, the show here to talk about this particular article because it was pretty interesting what you've done. So Lily, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. You're more than welcome, more than welcome. Uh, th so uh, we, we asked uh, Lily to jump on board here and be able to kind of unpack that article. And uh, we, we do appreciate it. I think we keep on coming back to you on a regular basis for some <laughs> words of wisdom here. So this article was really cool. And, and it actually uh, dove into uh, some analysis that you did with Systrix. You actually analyzed 550 domains. And uh, you've seen some impacts, uh, th and those domains were the ones that actually have seen impacts from the previous updates. So can you tell us about your selection process and, and uh, how you got to that group? Yeah, I think it's really important to start by talking about that because, um, as I mentioned in the article, this isn't a comprehensive list of every website being tracked by Systrix on the Internet by any means. Right. Um, they actually do those types of analyses, usually in their like UK and European indexes. So um, I think they actually did publish last week, like the overall biggest winners and losers in the UK. Oh, cool. So they have that on their site. Um, but what I do is I have a handful of running lists of domains that I use for various purposes, primarily around analyzing the algorithm updates and like sites that I know are investing really heavily in things like EAT mm -hmm. and um, you know, optimizing to try to kind of keep up with what Google's looking for in its new algorithm updates. And then I have a, another giant list of domains that I've pulled from the similar web database using a variety of categories that I think are really interesting to analyze, mm -hmm. particularly as it relates to coronavirus. Um, so I recently published an article about that that was focusing on those categories. So with this article, I basically just compiled a lot of the sites that I know have been affected by recent algorithm updates pulled in some of the information from the uh, coronavirus mm -hmm. uh, article as well. So it kind of gives us a somewhat holistic view of the different types of categories that are being affected. Absolutely. And you're seeing and you're what you're doing is you're also looking at that 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 topical contextual series of changes that are happening that are so volatile. So um, you you did a sampling from the fourth to the eighth and mm -hmm. Um, what's your takeaway on, I mean, your initial, and by no means are we done with this algorithm update. Uh, it usually takes two, maybe three weeks to be able to see what, what transpires, but your, your initial takeaways were pretty interesting. Uh, so lay it on us there. Yeah, indeed. And I am actually updating the numbers today. I'm probably going to continue to do that over the next couple of weeks, as you mentioned, because mm -hmm. the fourth to the eighth is by no means a comprehensive picture of what's going to happen with this algorithm update. Right. But I think the biggest takeaway was that a lot of sites that have been trending pretty well over the last few core updates or that have been seen as like good examples of what to look for with algorithm updates are seeing declines this time. Hmm. Um, so, and on the flip side, there's some sites that have been hit negatively over the last few years that are now seeing some upticks. So I want to be careful to say like, oh, this site's doing something well and this site's not doing something well. Because I think what my perspective is, is that maybe like some of the signals that Google was looking for over the past core updates, maybe they've dialed back a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so it's hard to say, but there's certainly some interesting like, oh, really, that site is not really that trusted, but they're seeing an uptick as of last week's update. So, so almost a reversal on some of those, yeah? A little bit. I mean, we have to be careful to use that word. It's kind of a controversial word yeah, in no, the I, I would agree with algorithm <laughs> update space. But um, yeah, I mean, things are reversing to an extent. Uh, I like to call it recalibrating. <laughs> 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 All right, that's a safe, that's a safe uh, middle of the road uh, uh, description there. And so you referenced in your article number of uh, YMYL uh, sites that were disproportionately affected. And that's what you're saying is that there's a there's a lot of volatility in that space. And we saw that uh, from the August uh, 2018 algorithm update, but even as as late as uh, January. So this is the the first big update uh, uh, this year after oh, during COVID. So yeah, you have to take that into con into context because 
I mean, there's so much news. There's such a glut of news that um, it's been a race actually get coronavirus information in front. And you know, uh, rightfully so, we need to be able to educate, our, educate ourselves. Barry Swartz actually chimed in. He just tweeted about the fact that local SEO doesn't seem to be uh, directly affected in this in this space. There's just mm. it, so it, that's interesting to be able to hear uh, that particular take, uh, local news and such. So. Um, uh, what do you think about the overall winners and losers? Uh, I know you know ever it's too early to tell collectively, but can you name some of the winners that have come out of this particular update with some high percentages? Yeah, so um, there's definitely been some movement in like the rehab and and recovery space. Mm -hmm. So addictions and recovery is one of the biggest winners. Um, but again, we have to put it in context where I believe that site saw some pretty big declines over the last couple of years. So when we say they've seen a huge increase in visibility, it doesn't mean they've necessarily gotten back to where they were before they were hit a few times. Same is true for WH Foods. I don't exactly know how they pronounce it. It might be Whole Foods or something, but it's not the actual Whole Foods. It's uh, whfoods.com. It's right. like a, a, I forgot his name, but it's like a guy that's, that talks about food and nutrition. And he's been hit by a lot of the last few core updates, and he saw a 56% increase this time. Wow. Wow. Um, yeah. So, and there's a handful of things like that. So it's, as you mentioned, it's really, really hard to analyze because we're seeing a lot of shifts in demand take place because of coronavirus. Mm -hmm. So a lot of things are shifting online, including like alcohol meetups and, and AA and things like that. Um, there's definitely been a big shift towards people searching for recipes and food delivery and grocery delivery. So that's also changing, right. you know, search behavior. So it's it's really hard to separate this algorithm update from what we're seeing with coronavirus. I think there's a lot of overlap. Right. Um, however, I think one of the most salient things that took place last week was um, like news was affected. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing a lot of like either super liberal or super conservative sites that have seen huge changes in visibility and it's not in one specific direction. And then there's a couple fact-checking sites. So there's Snopes and then there's Media yep. Bias Fact Check, yep. uh, which basically are like like the police of <laughs> you know, online news publishing. And both of those sites saw declines, which is pretty interesting. That is interesting. So, um, yeah, yeah, we were having a look at that as well. And there was a, there's a lot of fluctuation. And it doesn't seem to be picking in, in one particular partisan viewpoint or another. It's just... Are, are we in the space that this algorithm could very well possibly be an update tied to the topical nature of, of COVID? Um, search patterns yeah. have changed. Consumers have changed. Could, this act, could, could the actual virus and our search patterns actually have elicited this, this particular change? I was thinking about that, um, especially in the context of things reversing. That was like my first conspiracy. I was like, maybe Google's trying to be nice to people that have had a really hard time yeah. over the past couple of years. I mean, that's a really like, they've never confirmed that they do anything like that with these updates, but that was my first kind of like hunch. Mm -hmm. um, but also, yeah, I think like in the case of Snopes and Media Bias Fact Check, what I found interesting was I started to dig into the keywords that they used to rank for that they're not right now. Um, and, or rather that they got pushed down a little bit. So in the case of Snopes, for example, they have um, an article about coronavirus conspiracies. Mm -hmm. And a couple of weeks ago, they were ranking really well for it. But I think those topics got so popular yep. that people like Reuters and CNN started to write about it. So it's not like Snopes did anything wrong. It's just that they got pushed down by CNN and Reuters. Yep. So, yeah, I mean, the fact that there's so much news happening and Google has they've admitted a couple weeks ago or they've confirmed like we're actually really focusing on specific publishers as it relates to coronavirus, mm. um, local news in many cases. For example, if you are a local news publisher that doesn't use AMP, they're actually allowing you to be in top stories right That's now right. on right. mobile. They're, they're letting you be in the carousel too, aren't they? Yeah. So they're making exceptions if you publish trustworthy coronavirus content. So huh. That could totally, I think that could totally be something that's happening. So is right this now. a, 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 a uh, example of something in the, in the near future after everything subsides? Are we going to be looking at updates as trending topics and trending uh, consumer patterns emerge? Are we going to be seeing a different type of update based on that? That's, I don't mean to go conspiracy, but I mean, <laughs> if this is a behavior that's directly contextually challenged, 
And it could very well be that different shifts in news and different consumption patterns could actually trigger another update just to be able to recalibrate, like you're saying. Yeah, I think it was something that we were already seeing happen organically just based on how Google's current algorithms work. Yep. And like I've talked about in a previous article, like they're prioritizing the things that are meet, meeting searcher intent and what searches are, searches are, are, excuse me, searches are looking for without necessarily typing, I want a virtual hangout or I want an online class. If they type class, they meant online class because right. that's all they can do right now. Right. So maybe this algorithm update was supposed to be like, we know that consumer behavior has changed. And so we're going to reward or, or surface the sites that are best meeting that intent. Yeah, in responsive as an advocate for the consumers. Mm -hmm. huh. Exactly. Maybe. I mean, it's hard to say. Again, it's only been a few days, but it seems like that might be a logical use of Google's uh, updates right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. Because it's a weird time to roll out a big core update. Right? And that was the last point. And I, I want to be respectful of your time, but that was the last point. We're really rolling out an update right now during COVID. I mean, we, there's a there's a, a good bit of noise in the in the SEO channels of really right now. I mean, <laughs> for businesses trying to hold on to online e-commerce and online business, um, there's certainly going to be a rush to figure out did the bottom drop out of my rankings. I mean, that's a pretty tough time to be able to to, to even respond to a uh, an algorithm update like that, right? Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, for my clients that have seen declines as a result of this update, it's like, you've got to be kidding me. Yeah. It's the last thing we need right now. Um, but, you know, on the contrary, there are some sites that I'm sure are very, very happy that this update took place. So yep. it's a toss up a tough, <laughs> tough situation. Yeah, as always. All right. Well, Lily, thank you so much. We're certainly going to keep a, a, a watch on your uh, articles and your additional articles as you update the data. So uh, ping us, sure. let us know. But uh, if there's anything else we can do for you, kudos on you getting that article out. You're actually ranking right there <laughs> at the top of, of uh, the, the, the uh, core update uh, searches. So thanks so much for cool. joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. More than Have welcome. A good one. All right, so for our third article, it comes from Impact, uh, from Vin Gaeta. Uh, Yelp and Shopify release omni-channel updates during COVID-19. So two big names in the e-commerce and retail industry push out updates specifically targeted at omni-channel needs in, the t in today's world. So the, the releases from Shopify and Yelp are specifically intended to help small businesses get the most out of their omni-channel approach to better serve their clients. So first thing, first first on the topic was uh, actually their, their focus on Yelp, new Yelp products and features geared towards COVID-19 buyers. So what they've done is actually rolled out a number of new features that are important right now uh, during the online presence, uh, online shopping that weren't there before, allowing them to drive business. One of them being new virtual service offerings. They actually show on business pages allowing users to easily browse businesses that have shifted to virtual offerings such as consultations, trainings, shows, and other things. Uh, it's a great way to actually let folks know that your yoga classes or therapy sessions are still available. They also have a Yelp Connect, which launched in the fall, uh, that actually has been updated to, to be free for eligible businesses to better communicate with, and share updates with their consumers. So uh, there's some new business highlights in there as well that it can dis display on the business listing that illustrate how you're still doing business. So there's gift cards during COVID-19, delivered dur during cu curbside pickup, during so a number of key things that we're now uh, getting used to here uh, 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 during this COVID are, are available at Yelp. So, uh, Morty said something pre-show that was pretty insightful. So, what's your take on, on the Yelp's configurations here? Well, the, the Yelp thing reminds me of Google on the local panel or the or local service ads even, right? There's constant labeling, constantly um, updating, constantly adding new information. Um, local service ads, um, they now have accommodations, right? So, all the all of your COVID-19 accommodations, you can list them. Like, uh, we offer um, curbside pickup or our drivers are wearing masks, I'll leave it by your door. So that seems very much Google-esque, which I know will probably piss off a lot of Yelp people if I said that, or I just <laughs> did say that. Um, but who knows? I mean, Yelp could have been working on it for a long time before Google. So, right. no, well, but yeah, it's definitely good stuff. 
It is, and we give kudos to Yelp for adjusting to be able to to, to help their Yelp customers. Um, but you're right; is that uh, this 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 uh, local business engagement uh, from a from a property management standpoint is really coming into its into its own. I mean, local yeah. uh, Google My Business have been there and ha is giving us new more and more tools. But um, now a lot of these other platforms are starting to uh, give these these uh, new utilizations for us. So keep keep aware of that, guys. If you're in Yelp, uh, go to your Yelp setting because I guarantee that you you get in there you're going to get some traffic or get some interaction with your customers um, secondly on the on the docket here in this article was uh, a focus on Shopify's POS. It's designed to actually improve the omni-channel efforts. Now, they had actually relaunched this point-of-sale system, and they intend it to better assist the brick-and-mortar locations in, in pushing towards omni-channel business. So, check this out. The, the release aims to help merchants stay flexible and resilient in the face of challenges to their business today and ever-changing retail landscape ahead, according to <laughs> Shopify's <laughs> announcement. Um, so, they, they go on to say that merchants who connected their online and in-store sales with Shopify POS saw revenue increase 30% year-over-year, fueled by, in part, the merchants who adopted buy online and pick, in, pick up in-store as well as local delivery. So I tried to go through this article, <laughs> Morty. Right. <laughs> <laughs> And I really didn't I know what I was. I want to hire this guy. Yeah, who wrote this? I want to hire them. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I, we appreciate it, but there was this. This we didn't even see what the actual items are. It kept on. Yeah, just kind of, the, I, the image there, like the image that shows you nothing. What is that? It's it's literally a a, a POS t uh, tablet and a POS uh, smartphone. What are the additional functions? Uh, I can't. Boxes, lots of boxes. You get more boxes now. <laughs> It's it's great material design, but I guess we get more boxes, and you can uh, schedule certain things for online pickup. I it just we didn't get to the meat of the matter on on this particular section, although it sounds really good that something's yeah, happening yeah. from P from the Shopify PO. I, I, I mean, good. It's, it's it's you know businesses are gonna you know they have a good stat in there, thirty percent more whatever. You get from this. <laughs> all right, all right. I don't. By the way, how do they know that? Like, how do they figure that out? They just launched this thing now. Whatever. Okay. All right. Yeah, exactly. I have no idea. So we're just going to move along here. All right. So we do have our Google update, and this is going to springboard into uh, our conversation with Morty today. Here's the update for you. May 4th, 2020, day that lives in SEO infamy, infamy right now. It's a, you know, it's a big one. It's a wallop. Google, Google rolls out hundreds of algorithm changes each year, and whenever they go to a core, uh, we're all watching this. So Danny Sullivan, uh, Google search liaison, has confirmed that a core algorithm update was, was rolling out on May 4th. Google has been one step ahead of the SEO community when it comes down to naming these updates, and now they're actually going generically of just month and year, evidently. I still think this, this, is, a, this is the force update. It's, right. It's got to right. be. Yeah, I mean, it's May the 4th. It's got to be. It's gotta, they, I we, know. People are very upset about that. Very upset. <laughs> we just don't. But don't. you know what the problem is? When SEOs do stupid things, like name it Florida 2. Yeah. Because at the same time as PubCon, where Florida 1 came out, even though that, you know, the, the structure of it had nothing to do with Florida 1, that's where the problem comes that, in. That we truly. did it to ourselves. We did do it to ourselves. But what we don't know, is this a Jedi update or a Sith update? That's Ooh, what it's we always know. a Sith. It's, it's always, always a depends. Sith. <laughs> wait, 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 Google has anything like Jedi going on with it? I mean, I, <laughs> can I say that on, on air? You, you absolutely can. We'll edit and okay. post. <laughs> no, no, a, absolutely. A, a giant billboard. Morty said this. About <laughs> so uh, there's certainly some previous core updates and, and you know, everything we're holding on to everything. I just want to throw some screenshots up on the uh, on the uh, video as well as I certainly reference that in our show notes. Uh, Semrush actually had a high, very high volatility at 9.4. We hadn't seen one of those uh, since the days of Medic. Uh, we, uh, we had MozCast running there uh, at a high 112 de yeah. degrees. Uh, 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 weather pattern there and uh, cognitive also shows us a good deal of of uh, volatility and that was also uh, before the beginning of the month as well as uh, very high volatility during uh, the May 5th and 6th and there's Rank Ranger 
And uh, uh, Rank Ranger certainly has a, an extreme view of the volatility here. Uh, we captured a couple of the, of the features, a couple of the uh, the additional features inside of the, uh, the the rank volatility. We saw already earlier on into uh, into the mm. er, latter part of the month was feature snippets dropping by a good deal, like three yeah. or four uh, percent visibility. And conversely, related questions also uh, bounced up at the same time. So, Morty, well, give us a take on. Uh, Obviously, the CMO of Rank Ranger. Give us a take on on what you're seeing on your tool set. So I'm, I'm going to confess something. Yep. I've been slow digging into the actual um, the update itself. That I have not checked the the serve features from the from the current update. I'm breaking news to Morty. It's 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 it's, it's, it's heretic. <laughs> but if you see, but you see there though. Wait, wait I, I will redeem myself. All right. What you're seeing there, those those uptick or that uptick on the uh, related questions, or people also ask, right? Because we can never agree on names and anything, right? Um. And the feature snippet downturn all came from the the unconfirmed update that rolled out at the end of April. Yep. Right. So Google has said they this happens a lot. By the way, this happens all the time. And Google's, I think they've said this pretty much. Like we like to piggyback a lot of stuff on our updates. Mm -hmm. They tend to piggyback testing out certain feature biddings when they roll out an at, update. At the very same time. Yeah. No, no, I get Which it. Which kind of makes sense, right? Especially for the feature snippets and the related questions. Yep, absolutely. So we certainly are going to keep on bringing you these these volatility volatility reports, especially during a Google update. So next two weeks, we are going to be giving these snapshots. And uh, thanks for contributing onto that, and Morty. And keep oh, sure. keep keep up the good work on Rank Ranger. Yeah. All right, Thank so you. Oh, more than welcome, more than welcome. All right, so let's wrap that up. We certainly all appreciate uh, our uh, continued sponsorship of AH4Fs. If you're if you're wanting to understand competitive analysis. Analysis, uh, of your competitors and why they're doing what they're doing and how they're getting their their uh, keyword traffic. Uh, you can actually see that, see that with Ahrefs. You can see their pages, content, and their top ranking words so you can actually deconstruct and use that against them, right? <laughs> so uh, with that, uh, if you're not getting significant traffic, you might want to check out some of these tools. A lot of the tools that we referenced today because it is absolutely, uh, these are invaluable tools to be able to navigate your SEO. Uh, be sure to check out over at as, uh, Edge of the Web, uh, uh, all of our different uh, uh, interviews as well as our pod, uh, our uh, uh, show notes and and uh, and we also have a few uh, transcripts over there as well. So check those out. Uh, be sure to check out the full interview with Morty here. I link to this podcast and be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the YouTube channel so you'll know when we go live with our next show. And on top of that, let us know how we're doing over at edgeofthewebradio.com by taking uh, the anonymous poll. Let us know how we're doing and what you'd like to hear more of from the show. For all of us over at Edge of the Web, thanks so much for listening. Do not be a piece of cyber driftwood. We'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye.